Hi, I'm Jim with Stickley on Security, and today I'm going to talk to you about how a virus can end up on your computer. Now, I get contacted all the time where someone's computer's been hacked, and they go, I have no idea how this person got on my computer. I don't know how they got that virus there. You know, they just are confused. And we start doing a little research, and it will generally turn out that they made one little mistake, and that one little mistake led to their computer being compromised. So today I'm going to talk to you guys about how viruses end up on your computers and what you can do to spot them so you don't end up being a victim. One common way to get a virus is through an email attachment. And an email attachment is when you receive an email and it has a little file attached to it. And you can open that file up. Now, oftentimes, an email will look like it came from your friend or a family member or somebody you trust, and it'll have this attached file. And the message will be something that's compelling, saying, hey, you need to open this up, or this is a funny little thing I've attached, or it's really neat to see, or here's a picture of you that's really wacky. They'll send something like that. And the whole goal is to get you to open up this attached file. Now, if you do, that could actually be a virus that you're executing on your computer. More importantly, criminals have figured out that they can send emails on behalf of people that you might trust that aren't really a friend or family, something like a financial institution or maybe even a government organization. So for example, it might come from the IRS or it might come from the Better Business Bureau. And it'll have a message saying that there's a problem or something's wrong or there's a security issue. All of these things will then say, please open this attachment to solve this issue. Anytime you receive an attachment, you should become suspicious immediately. And that's because these attachments can be very, very bad. Also, keep in mind, a criminal can oftentimes design a virus so that when it infects one computer, it'll actually send out an email from that computer to everybody that's in the contact list on that person's email account. So therefore, it looks like it came from a person you trusted, and now it spreads out to all of their friends. And that's how these viruses keep going. If you receive an email and it came from somebody that you know, a friend or family member, and you didn't request the email and it has an attachment that they want you to open up, pick up the phone and call them or send them a separate email back saying, hey, I got this weird thing. I'm a little suspicious. Tell me more about it. And by the way, confirm you are who you say you are. Something to prove that it is really a legitimate attachment and that they really do know you and it's not some hacker that's taken over their account. Also, if you receive an email from, say, a financial institution or the government or anything like that, instead of just opening up the attachment, pick up the phone and call that agency or that entity or whoever it happens to be and confirm with them that this attachment is legitimate and it's something that they sent. If you can't do that, if you can't confirm it's legitimate, do not open the attachment. Another really common way to get a virus on your computer is through a malicious website. And there's three really main ways that a malicious website can get viruses or other malware onto your computer. The first way is actually taking advantages of vulnerabilities in your operating system. And people go, well, what does that mean? And what it really means is you're not keeping up with your patches or the security updates that you need to place on your computer. Now, oftentimes people go, you know, I have no idea how to do that. I'm not really sure how to put on these patches or how to put on these updates. And I actually have another video, it's a stick on security video titled How to Stay Secure Through Updates and Patches. And if you go and watch that video, it really walks you through the importance of updates and patches and what you can do to protect yourself from these types of attacks. The second way that a virus can end up on your computer through a malicious website is through applications called Java or ActiveX. Now, when you go to a website and you get a message that pops up on your screen and it's got some sort of a little security warning and it says, this website is trying to execute a Java or an ActiveX script or application on your computer and you're given two choices. You can either click run or you can click cancel. Now, if you do not know what this site's doing or why it would be loading software on your computer, you should always click cancel. It is very rare that you need to actually run ActiveX or Java on your computer, and you should be really suspicious. When in doubt, always click cancel. The third way that you can get a virus from a malicious website is through downloading a program from the site itself. And what will happen is you'll go to the website and a message will pop up on your screen saying, this website is trying to send you a file. And you'll have three choices. You can either decline or cancel, or you can install or run, or you can just download or save. And if you do not know what this application is, you should be suspicious and you should just hit cancel. And that's your safest bet. If you believe that you want to install this program, make sure you do some research first. Find out who the company is, find out if there's anything out on the internet. Do a Google search on this particular company and the program they're trying to send you and make sure that you're completely confident that it is legitimate before you choose to install or run this application. 
People sometimes don't realize that you can get a virus even if you're not on the internet. Nowadays, more and more people are using thumb drives or flash drives. They're the little USB drive that you can hold in your hand and it allows you to save files from your computer onto this little external device. Then you can take that device and hand it to a friend. They can plug it in their computer and transfer the files right onto their computer. It's a really convenient way to share files and pictures and music and that type of thing. The problem is that viruses are designed to take advantage of these devices. So if that person has a virus on their computer, and they put a little drive into their computer, the virus will transfer onto that little USB drive, or that thumb drive, they will then give it to you. Now when you plug it into your computer, just like that, the virus will transfer into your computer, and now you have the virus as well. So you have to be really, really cautious about who you're sharing thumb drives with, and if you're going to give somebody a thumb drive and then you're gonna put it back into your computer later, there is a risk you can get a virus just from doing that. I also want to point out that sometimes people get a false sense of security when they install antivirus on their computer. Now, antivirus is designed to prevent viruses from getting on your computer, and I think every single computer out there should absolutely have it. That said, it's not 100%. In fact, there is a lot of viruses that'll still end up on computers that have antivirus loaded on the systems. So just because you have antivirus doesn't mean you're guaranteed you won't get a virus. Uh, with that in mind, it's so important to understand how to detect and prevent viruses from getting on your computer to begin with. Now, obviously, there's other ways that a virus might end up on your computer. But if you eliminate just the risks I've talked about today, you will greatly reduce the chance that you'll end up with a virus on your computer. As always, spend a little time, do a little research, and protect yourself so you don't become the next victim of identity theft. I'm Jim for Stickland Security. Have a great day.